pouring dark Whoa. Back from the dead is a miracle dark They counted me out, moment the truth Counting it down, I'm that dog story was down for the count Back on my feet, back with a mic Back on the beat, back with a fan Let it bang in the streets, the game won't lock I stand with a key, standing my ground I am planning to flee, standing my ground I am planning my feet, taking a stand Erasing my destiny, shaking his hand Flipping the script, changing the plans Up to the top and I'm taking the fans what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Thursday Night CrossFit Talk. And we have technical issues right off the top. Uh-oh. Everywhere. Yeah, so we stream to Twitch. We stream to Twitter. We stream to Facebook. And we stream to YouTube. And as I launch tonight's broadcast, Twitch is having issues. Um, and so I had to, like, clear out some stuff there and uh, remove us from Twitch for this broadcast so no twitch tonight Ooh. and we deeply apologize for the versus show buffering so much we tried something different this week to see if we could get that figured out didn't work we're going to keep trying and i'm going to reach out to um stream to see what's going on with it because we have done this type of broadcast before and it's never buffered it's just started doing this with the Versa series for some reason. So, uh, all fun technical stuff. I thought when I was in my 20s, I would always be technologically savvy, and I've learned that I'm not anymore. Yeah, I'm not. So, yeah. I know how to plug in microphones now. That's about it. Yeah. So, how was everybody's week? Oh, great. That was good, good for me. Yeah. I mean, it was a short week for school. We have uh, this Friday to, yes, to, or tomorrow and Monday off. So I drove home to Sarnia, which is my hometown, right after school today. So I'm home. Nice. And you have a big family, right? And mm -hmm. it, are they all in for the weekend? Uh, they will be. Uh, my my one sister is missing. She'll be here uh, Saturday, I think. Is your twin there? Yes, I saw her today. Okay. Um, you also had a good week because you got the official video verified. What was that process like? Did you just get an email saying, "Congratulations, you're you're good." Um, yeah, essentially the email that I posted on my story was the email from Becky from um, CrossFit that sent us that. But like none of the videos got like individually verified like we get at quarterfinals. It was just that email that confirmed my placement. Um, and then I went to the leaderboard to see if anything had changed in my numbers and none of my scores had changed. I'm like, okay, I'm good. And then when I, when I did that right away, I had noticed the change at the top. And I was like, oh, someone got a penalty and then knew right away um like what we're going so uh like said she won 2500 us dollars <laughs> equal spousal split <laughs> sounds legit uh, she also well, she also told me about equal spouse um split when she paid for coast and cali's uh, vaccines today or yesterday sorry <laughs> <laughs> So the only the only bright side for Carolyn is when you convert that to Canadian, you're actually making more. It'll end up being the same because we because we'll get like thirty percent um, withhold and stuff like that. So normally it's going to be like thirty five hundred American, which comes back to around five thousand Canadian. Okay. Yeah, thirty percent. Dang. Yeah, that they always hold that. Oh yeah. That's not just a Canadian thing. No. Um, so any plans for it or just put it away to, to pay for your season? No, I'm just saving up for Lex and I, family stuff, future plans, um, maybe eventually a house or something, but just saving up. Very cool. I'm not a big spender. <laughs> Workout clothes, shoes. Can't justify that stuff anymore. Like I have too much. Yeah, and you're like, are you still sponsored by Tier, or was that a one season? Yeah, so that technically ended um, 
middle of March. I had like a one year contract and then um, so that ended and then I, w- I didn't get extended technically, but I mean, I'll still be wearing tier like I like their stuff. Um, that won't change. So hopefully I can get back onto it. They said like if I make, let's say like the games or something, like they would do another type of um, possible deal or something like they do to some of the athletes um, at certain competitions. So hoping to get that again because it was a really good partnership. It helped me a lot throughout my season for some of the expenses. So I was bummed that um, I wasn't able to re-sign something. But like I also don't have like an agent and stuff like that working to help me like some of the other athletes do. So um, I guess Lex counts sometime as my my agent, <laughs> but with less experience than some of the ones out there. And she takes 50% split instead of. Yeah, that's a hard, that's a hard taxing right there, Lex. I don't know about this agent now. Might need a new one. Might fire her. Yeah. But you got to let them know you're on the, the original Thursday night CrossFit podcast. I know. As Kenneth likes to always say, the original. <laughs> um, yeah. And you've placed fifth in the open that, and you've been on around the whiteboard. Like you've probably had more exposure this season overall media wise than you have in a couple of years. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Probably. I mean, yeah, the open helps um, or on the whiteboard helps. I mean, the demo team last year was still a big um, opportunity. I think that was really big. I really, like, I really enjoyed that. Hopefully I, I don't have to get to that point this year, but it was really a cool experience. Yeah, we are. We're, we're all speeds ahead games athlete, not demo athlete. That's the plan. Yeah. D- did you fill out your top 25? Me? Yeah. Yeah. I did it today. I, it came this time. Okay. But you guys you have to do one wrote- at the beginning of the, or at the end of each month for the beginning um, of the following month. So off season was like, it just kind of sporadic, but it looks yeah. like now it's every month. Now that the open has started. Um, let's hope it's better than the last time. The last time I was yeah. in the hospital, so I missed submitting my my ballot. But like they had people like yeah, Mal in the top ten, and people that there's, announced they're not even competing. Yeah, there's like eight nine people on there. Like you can't even like create a full list with like it's it's not good. Yeah, I had to write in like four people personally so um see so yeah, i and i actually this time took pictures of my ballot so i could actually remember the exact order of where i put people well um, and last year they released like every uh media person's um picks but he didn't do that this this time around so he only did that one time oh one okay time. was that yeah. the end of the uh, season i think it's right before the games right before the games that's okay. Yeah, I think I don't know. I think I think it all depends on how busy he is and how much he can put together. Um, yeah. but uh but yeah. Um so mine's in. Um I've been pretty blatant about who I think is gonna win the games on both right. sides. So that's who I went with. So I have Emma Lawson on the women's side and Jeff Adler on the on the men's side. To stick with the all Canadian podcast here. I think those are very good picks. So, yeah, my my women's is a little controversial, I'm sure. It's Emma, Laura, Tia. I I actually think mine might be the exact same. It either is Laura, Emma, Tia, or the same as yours. I'll have to look at my screenshot. There's there's just a lot of unknown right now with with Tia's wrist. Yeah. Um, yeah. I almost moved her down because of the wrist. Just I know. We do them every month. So, yeah. You know, if we find out it's okay, I can move her back up. But, right. But she has to get into that East semi. And that's not going to be an easy feat if you're not 100%. Nope. And it's been how long? It's been two months like that. Like, that's, it's not just like arthritis stuff here. Like, I don't know what that is that she has, but it seems like there was a, a fracture or something to me. So have you been like following the frog rips stuff? Uh, I saw one video about it, but not much. 
something about yeah. the frog grips and the stickiness or the something grip. of it. Right. Or, when it, the wrist is really thick, the wrap around the wrist. Yeah. It's yeah, a little bit. It's more almost like it's just grip lock. I mean, either they're so tacky that it's, but, or it's so long that it's getting grip lock and getting stuck. But the way, the one day when she was like, like, I think either at the omen or whatever, so the way she like pointed at what was going on, it looked like the people that have posted like their injuries from the grips. So I'm like, I don't know. I'm very curious what actually is going on. Well, she's been used, she was using the bear complex for many years. Cause I remember I was like, Oh, who's good at CrossFit? Oh, they're wearing bear complex. I'm going to order bear. Com like that's, you know, you just look at who are the top athletes and what they're wearing. She's always been wearing bear complex. So when you switch, like you notice those difference, if it's hitting your wrist a little bit different, especially if you, you said it's thicker here. So as you're doing bar muscle ups, it might be putting pressure somewhere different. Yeah. Yeah. Colton switched to him too. I did um, see that. So, yeah. I mean, I've heard they're like super tacky, but maybe they're too tacky. There's this, there's this one company that I tried. They're like basketball material. I don't know if that's like the frog grips or not, but Lex uses them now. They're so grippy. I never had any grips like that, but you can't have a, like, it doesn't help to have chalk on, on the bar. So like, I didn't want to get used to them because I know at comp there's going to be chalk on the bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, not that I'm like a, a gymnast by any means, but I have the Element 26 um, chalkless grips. Mm -hmm. And for me, it just works best. Even just doing hanging knees raises, being a big guy, it just gives me that little extra grip so I can string together more than, than I could before. So I really like those. And I don't like to chalk. Like I don't chalk when I lift. I don't. So that's just I, me. I do. I like the break. Save, yeah, you're saving a rest break. We'll take. Oh, I can find break. ways to break. I can tighten those collars. <laughs> I can uh, adjust my wrist wrap straps. Whatever. I don't need chalk, but yeah. Um, Lex says, uh, "Games bound for Scott and games bound for Jamie and Carol." Because <laughs> she said, "How's the gym been?" How, yeah. How's the gym? So been? this week has been much better. I'm not way less sore. I still feel pretty weak. And today was horrible. What was today? There was no rest. So it was um, the ghost. Oh, I love that one. Not. Oh, there's too many one. double unders. Right. Well, it's, it's a great workout to work on double unders. Because it's FICO, it's basically FICO and bad style. Okay. Row cows, um, burpees, double unders. Minute okay. rest for eight rounds so you're doing double unders under fatigue but my my engine is so bad by the time i got to the double unders like i was sucking air so hard like it just was rough it's um, a hard workout it is especially those last four rounds we pro we program it at our gym normally like halloween or at least another time in the year. It's like our affiliate owner's like favorite workout as well. It's a classic. Yeah, if you if you want a an engine workout, like it's it's the one. And that's what Thursdays are at Polaris. It is every Thursday is like a longer like um engine type workout. Kind of a Christie specialty is like what we like yeah. to call it. So but yeah it it was bad, but I, but I do feel better this week. Like my legs aren't, I actually put weight on my back for back squats this week. Um, and I wasn't as sore as air squats a week before. That's good. So it was only 95 pounds. And it's funny because, um, like I logged it in my, in my, in Wattify that I checked my ego and Christy actually commented. Because I have not seen Christy since I've been back. Because she's been off to Houston, doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, but she actually gave me a, a big thumbs up for checking my ego. And uh, that's just where I am right now. Nothing wrong with yeah. that. And just yeah. got to get stronger. Just consistency and then it starts going up. Yeah. Like Again, big improvement from last week to this week. Um, just got to stay the course. Mm-hmm. 
listen to my body. The one thing I found out I could not do is lay on my back under fatigue. That still is not real good for me. What happens? I just can't breathe. Okay. So like we did bench press on Monday as part of the workout. And when I laid back on the bench under fatigue, could not breathe. Warm up could r rip out bench press. So it, I don't know. Cause that's what, hmm. like, that's what AFib affected the most was my lungs. And there was like a backup of blood in the heart and, and lungs. So I think that just hasn't fully flushed out yet. But, but I just, so I just did sitting uh, strict press. So I could just keep moving. Same, sim, similar, same or similar stimulus and just kept moving. So, do we want to get into the news of the week? Yeah, let's hit it. We've already hit the Carolyn fifth in the open official. Hooray. Yay. That's so cool. Crushed um, it, dude. Then we're going to talk about Grace Walton. And, and when I talk about this, I want to talk about it, in my view, more overarching. So, Grace had a video. It was looked at. She was in first place going into video submission. Uh, CrossFit looked at it, said in two of her muscle-up reps, uh, her feet rose above the bar height, making them bad reps, gave her a 12-second penalty, uh, which dropped her from first in the open to second in the open, and basically costing her $5,000. So... I have a lot of thoughts about this, but I want to open it to you guys first. So your initial thoughts, the videos out there, I'm going to play it as you guys talk. And I want to hear your reaction uh, to that. I, like when I first watched her video, like on the game's website, like I was normally I just looked at like I won't even watch the whole video. I'll watch the beginning of it sometimes. Just I want to see just people move. And I was like, oh, she moves well. It looks legit. Like it's it's good, right? Like you, you just kind of look. And then I tend to always go fast forward to the end. And then I look at the time to see whether like it was an accurate finish and whether they tried to sneak in a second or something. I don't know. Like that's just my my tendency. So when I first watched the video, I did notice right away that the feet were up on the last rep. And then I fast forwarded again. I was like, oh, let me see how it is under like fatigue, whether it changed throughout the workout. And I like I noticed the last three of the last four reps were high, but I didn't have like a huge problem because I was like, oh, she's legit. Like she's posted all her videos. It, like she moves very well. She's fit, everything. Um, it could be the angle. It does look a, a, above the bar. Definitely from what I see. Um, but yeah, it's just unfortunate because if you look at her original score, like it was like nine 30 or something like that. And if they're not looking at, so now it's like a nine 42 and there's a bunch of people in that like nine 30 range, like maybe like, I don't know, seven to 10, but if they're not looking at those videos as well, that's the issue because maybe some of those people would have their feet up a little bit and then she can still stay at in first place. Right. Like if you're only looking at those ones. Yeah. It's just, un it's unfortunate for her. It's kind of like, what's this like that one, right? That's above. That's good. The one foot maybe. And then wait, not that one. Yeah, that, one's that, above. that one was, yeah. And then, um, and then I think she has two more left or three more left. So that one's the one that I would say is a no rep. Just looking, I mean, from that angle anyways. Um, this one's good. Oh, it, it's it's above the line of, of that angle. That there. one's for her over. Yep. Like it... But again, my perspective was like, oh, she moves well. Like I'm, I was fine with it because I'm like, she's legit. Like she's fit. Like I had no problem with her winning. Like I was like, I was like, it's it's not like there was that many reps. It was like 
three reps. And I was like, eh. <laughs> that was my, that was my initial reaction. I was like, eh, okay. Like, it's not, it wasn't like that bad. Like it's not like every bar muscle up was a glide. That was right. I threw um, Lex's comment up there. Cause you were, you were saying that Carolyn through your argument. So I just was putting it up there as um, additional in, in your favor. Jamie, any comments? I mean, I just, for one, I don't know why they changed the wording and the rule this year. Um, and I think that's getting a lot of talk. Like, so is it no longer any part of the foot of any, fo even one foot can't rise above the bar? Like that would have been pretty clear last year. Like the way it was worded last year was if her toe would have one toe would have popped up in front of a uh, higher than the bar. It's a no rep. And this one is like kind of subjective. They didn't do themselves any favor with the picture. Like, is it both feet and both heels, the entire foot? No idea. Um, I, I just going off of history of the bar muscle up, like know what I think, but I, I mean, I feel like there's a little bit of, um, room for dispute there on her behalf because they went and changed the rule and showed a picture that I don't know if they can definitively say that both of her feet were heels over the bar. So I think that was maybe not in their best interest. Um, and, um, Ken's comment here is hilarious. I hear they give less of a penalty for not submitting a video. <laughs> um, it's, it is so, it is so unfair. Like, like Tudor getting his huge penalty. Um, and you know darn well there are people moving way uh, worse than this that are not getting any type of repercussion. So it's like, I totally agree with Carolyn. Like, it wasn't egregious. It wasn't throughout her whole workout. Like, I we watch, I watched this original. And I was like, yeah, she moves pretty well. And yeah, there's a couple there that are like, little bit questionable but man i saw so many I, you know like you you as a crossfitter see it you see those glide kips and you're like well, that's clearly all that person can do and that's how they're getting all these reps um if she would have had an 8 10 score it would have been probably like even like carolyn and i probably would both be like man i don't know but it wasn't like this like top five in the world score like she didn't i don't know yeah so my, my my problem with it is the angle yeah right i mean the angle is the camera is below the bar with an up angle to her so it if you're close it's going to look like it's over yeah. yeah because the the depth of field will have the foot larger than the bar therefore it looks like it's going to be over and from that distance there's no way to know so to, for CrossFit to make these definitive penalties against her and Tudor, and again, let the video, the person that didn't even submit a video win her event, it just seems like they're they're picking who they want to receive the penalty. Yeah. And and like Jamie said, with the feet, like they had the same type of wording last year with the V-ups, right? It was like wasn't it feet? And it was like, what well, part of the foot, like the toes were all of a sudden the feet. So on the bar yeah. muscle, are we still considering that the same thing as the last year's V up where, I mean, the toes are part of the feet. <laughs> um, yeah. So I've, like I've always known the feet, the toes cannot go above the bar. That's how I, that's how I judge people as well. And how like, but. And then you have to kind of give benefit of the doubt technically to a certified judge that is right there at that angle watching that this, look where he's standing right like, like he's on the yeah. side he is literally I, so you ha you have to kind of give benefit of the doubt if it's an unsure angle he is literally holding on to the bar the rig to look right where he needs to look and we have andrew Sten, who is a high-end judge like it, it, it is close, but again, he's, he agrees with me, the angle and the distance. I don't think you call them no reps, but CrossFit does say if in doubt, you know, rep them. Right. But they, they say that in this case, but they didn't, there were so many videos that didn't even get looked at. It could have affected 
who won the Open. Like, even if she got that 12-second penalty, she could have still won had they continued down between her score and her new score. If they looked at any of those girls' videos and those girls get bumped out, what does she need for points? Not that many points, right, that she needed to... Um, four or something? Yeah, it's so like she four needed points. four people to get penalties. Well, she would have lost the tiebreaker to... Um, okay, so five. So five points that she would have needed. Um, yeah. And I, and I think it was Lex that said in here, conspiracy theory, CrossFit didn't want her to win because she doesn't go to an affiliate. Yeah, that's... That, does, that does make sense, right? And it's like, go to an affiliate where you get your certified judge. and I mean, you can still have a certified judge if you're not an affiliate, but... Yeah, I kind of even like that worse. Like, that's encouraging the no video. Um, like, them saying, I, I don't love that. It's always been one of my biggest things with, like, one of my beefs with the Open and CrossFit. And, like, just show up at an affiliate and any someone's going to validate your score. Like, that person did not watch my video it like i almost feel like the judge that judged you needs a secondary approval link then the the affiliate manager maybe can go through those maybe they have the sheets but like i want to know if i judged you that you didn't write 1121 instead of 10 instead of 1221 yeah because like, i to say yeah yeah exactly yeah so like if I, if you're putting me as a judge, I want to be able to click off on it and be like, yup, I did judge that. And that was their time. Um, and that way you're not getting people just putting any judge down. Um, and then it's just, it, cause just to say that the affiliate manager is like, they are not there watching every single go person go. And I bet you most of them don't keep their sheet everyone's sheet and like That's confirm that what the time that they entered was correct because there's a ton on there that have tie break times that are inconceivable stupid. did the affiliate manager decline those no they just went through and approved they went check 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 yeah. check 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 all in here's my final I think, I think i think that's a good point though jamie where it's like you can judge someone you can write your judge like you can sign the scorecard but that person's still writing in their score in the cross a dot or cross a games website and you don't know whether they made a mistake and then they have your name as a judge but they could write they could shave off a few seconds or what you know you have no idea so having that you would get a notification of all the people you judged and then you would be like yes 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 or something could be yeah. i mean theoretically that's the two pieces of the sheet right the affiliate manager yeah. gets the one that the judge filled out and goes right to the affiliate manager to be able to compare that's trusting the affiliate manager that they're going to actually look there's just so much trust going on in these online competitions in general <laughs> yeah um nick great makes a great point it's i like to pretend it's pro sports the ref said they're good reps not enough video evidence to overturn the call case closed that's a good and point. i like that too yeah i in conjunction with that, like why, like are if you go to the leaderboard right now, are all five or all three videos of all five of those athletes visible? Because if I was if I was Grace, I would want to see all my competitors' videos as well. Like yeah, for sure. So you're putting me on blast, and I don't even get to like see anything else. Like everyone, all if like those videos should all just go pu public. So like when I do like a uh, rogue challenges, for instance, so you can like hide your video at first when you first submit. Yeah. And then every time they'll always post the videos of the top five people Yeah, for all the challenges. So like you could have put it private, but now it's, now it's up there. If, if you're in the I top like five. That. I like that. That's a good idea. The other thing I think that would be a step in the right direction is if you're going to penalize someone, then you make the video public and you say, we're penalizing them for reps this 33 time. and 28. Yep. 608 had an no rep for, um, for this. Arbitrary yeah. two, and now you go figure it out. Mm -hmm. And like with Tudor, it was just consistent not yeah. doing it. 
What the hell yeah. does that mean? Yeah, and we never even saw his video to even know right. what it even looked like, right? Or did we see it somewhere? Right. I, I don't. I never think saw I the saw video any. of him doing it. They just gave him like a a huge penalty, a twenty percent decrease in his score, and we never even saw to what angle did he have. Uh, Lex says, "Glad clip ki kips are slower. This is a dumb penalty, anyways. She's not shortening the rep to cheat and be faster." But in under Twilight, fatigue, it does give her a bigger boost. It does. Because she would have had to come down. She like she maybe would have failed that rep had she not brought her feet that high. And so, like, I, I'm not, not saying the penalty isn't, like, a correct penalty for that penalty. I don't know if she should have gotten it, per se, in this instance. But, like, I do think... I do think they need to be stricter with the glide kips. Either, like, they need to either figure out if they want to just allow them. And this kind of goes back with the, like, the V-ups or, like, certain movements where it's like, we're not critiquing how you're doing the movement. We're just, are you getting from, are you if you do a snatch, are you getting from the ground to overhead? Do we allow this? Because they sure do in 55 plus go watch any older person snatch. Um so, like, if you aren't critiquing the movement, then is it just get from point A to point B? Then maybe we need to, like, reconsider how we're... And this is what sucks, in my opinion. The rules there, because it's obvious, Gracie was not trying to cheat the system. No, it I was, agree. If, if she did it illegally, it was inadvertent in just the course of her trying to complete the workout. But you do have those people out there that will glide kip the hell out of these to get all of their muscle ups, right? Yes. And you, you, do, so much. you don't want them affecting the leaderboard. Right. Right. But then we get to that line of like, is it good? Is it bad? And right when you're right at that line, it, it makes it rough. And, and that's where CrossFit has been so behind the curtain about their, dis, their decisions and what they do that it just leads you to believe they're not doing it in the best interest of the athletes. Agreed. I mean, yeah, just, I think it needs to be more, more clear cut. They need to be more transparent if they want it to trickle down the correct way. Um, and then they aren't. Yeah. I'm just asking for transparency. Just tell me what reps. You yeah. only had 10, 10 people to look at. You could tell me what reps you don't. you Because you know, like, Boz is sitting there going, check mark on that one, X on this one. And he could tell you 33 and 28. Yeah. Well, no, well, normally they would, so. have had, they would have had to have had multiple judges overturn that. Right? They're not yeah. just going to go off one judge. Well, do we know that? Is that the rule? Normally, yeah. I would say, yeah. I think they said that well, multiple well, judges would uh, review. Dave Eubanks, I think, on a podcast before said that, like, one person will review it, then it goes to the team where then they kind of make a decision or something like so that. So I know I that's, that is quarterfinals and on. Because that's when they the team that they've hired starts at quarterfinals. And then that team is like the first level. They make recommendations up. Then the next level finishes them off. None of that has been said for the open. There is no team reviewing this initially other than the main CrossFit HQ. I would assume more than one person looked at it and they agreed. I mean, I, I can't imagine one person made this decision. I was like, nope. I, I mean, I would, if I was going to make that final call, I'd be like, hey, anyone else agree, disagree? Um Wad Zombie here says, if we're trusting Emily Claus, judge, why not Gracie's? Well, that goes, and Lex says, because Grace is not at an affiliate. So we just, we give all no, trust think, to affiliates. I, we're, we're trusting Emily. We don't care about Emily's because she now just doesn't get the money. But these ones were, these ones were for money. If, if the, I mean, she could have maybe have kept her first place, but then just doesn't get money. <laughs> All right. If she doesn't send her video. <laughs> but again, well, I I'm as long as CrossFit exists, we'll have these questions. Just like in the NFL, everybody rips the referees. 
I, I think it happened. What wasn't everybody upset the other night at the officiating and the Iowa game, Carolyn? That Caitlin got some calls. Thirty-five or something like thirty to like five free throws or something. Yeah, it was definitely one way. So we want to talk about Carolyn on beyond the whiteboard. Not beyond the way, around the whiteboard. Around the whiteboard. Sponsored, Sponsored by, by beyond, beyond the, the whiteboard. Way. <laughs> so what was the experience like? Any when when you get in there, are you done is anything done ahead of time? Or do well, we, we see I got the, I got the questions the day before? Like um Peter sent them to me on my Instagram or Pedro for how you guys call his name's Peter, but um he sent I've, the questions I've this Peter for a lot longer. Um, on Instagram, and then I looked over them. Lex and I had discussions about each question on what points we thought were important. And then I had like backup stuff in case things were already taken, essentially. Um, it was good. It was, you, I mean, Lex was like uh, putting pressure on me to make sure that I don't get muted because I can ramble sometimes. Well, she's like, you need to watch the clock and not talk for too much and get your points across. So I tried doing that. And then I was on time for all of my one minutes. And then even the 20 seconds, I never got muted. So you were close. You Peter was close like, I was all yeah, the one time I got really close <laughs> to get muted. So my opinion for the quality of answers given you by far were stuck to the question and answered the question the best. I thought so too, but Lex told me I was too boring. <laughs> she goes, she goes, you're too boring. Colton's funny. So he's going to get some points. So I understood her point of view, <laughs> but I did think my questions or my answers had more material, but Lex just wants to, what'd you say? Add some personality. No, I think her exact words were probably, I was boring. <laughs> She's like, you need to swear or something. <laughs> yeah that's yeah. not genuine for everybody i yeah. liked listening to you like i don't need to hear colton say that that's a terrible question like i don't i don't know it's not a i guess what's the point of his show are we actually discussing the topics and giving answers or are we just M most of the trying to be snarky most of the questions were kind of there wasn't many like two sides right there are kind of obvious yeah. answers y so I think yes. that's why we didn't have as much kind of like banter because you couldn't really be like, no, I disagree with that. I actually think this. Yeah. Right. If you I had do, some of yeah. the questions that were a little bit more contra not con yeah, controversial or just more opinionated on the two sides, it would have been more interesting. Even in, in the rebuttals in the 20 seconds, you could have been disagreeing a little bit more. But yeah. I when I looked at the questions, like I thought there was clear obvious answers to me anyways and it seemed like the other two and and colton thought so as well yeah it's it's got to be tough because we're not in the most exciting time of the season right like you guys got the draw in between the open and quarters there's not a whole lot to talk about and when you have three athletes on i don't think affiliate type questions are the best questions to ask no and that's why i had to told lex i was like i don't think they'll ask anything about affiliates because i don't think i mean but ants an affiliate owner he said i mean technically so am i um it's for the views this is lex again carolyn answers were the best colton tied because he was sassy with pizzazz it's true he could have won just with his last answer, not even answer, but his uh, comment. last comment on um, uh, training Max and training Think Tub and all that so stuff. I, I have that pulled up. Oh, my gosh. Because I don't know if you guys saw, but from that, there is now a one-on-one -on -one competition happening in a week or so. Did you see that Max changed his profile bio on Instagram also? I did not. You have to go to his profile as well and look at the bio that he put on his uh, on his account. Okay, I'll do that after we play Colton's. Um, 
Colton's response. It's 30, has 30 seconds. Yeah. I have a question. Hey, oh God, I yeah. have a question oh. for you. Okay. Are you having Max L. Hag on tomorrow? Yes. Why? Why? <clears throat> Max L. Hag over at the training think tub. Those guys, they're an abomination to the sport. Max L. Hag is an absolute menace. They have their own podcast, the Corpus Anus podcast. And I heard them say the most ridiculous things, like uh, like the Jake German is the, the best in the burpees at CrossFit. And I just can't believe it was it. They, me next to him in a burpee workout, This I would end this man's life. They should pray that he never has that fate. And I cannot believe this, you're having... This is just 30 seconds. Is this what you were going to use your 30 seconds for? Is this your plan for if you want? <laughs> My plan was actually to concede my final minute and just use my the whole minute to say it because I didn't think I was going to win. <laughs> Beautiful. When I first met Colton, we did his first ever podcast. We couldn't get him to say three words. <laughs> He's bought into this um, yeah. to this new per- not new personality. Maybe it's, maybe it's been his personality the whole time, or or he's. You know, it's working for his image and sponsorships and stuff like that. And he's just kind of running with it. And I think that's, it's helping his brand. Like he's, that's how he's branding himself. It's great. Well, and he did, he does make a point, like in one of his answers, like the key to this whole thing is being authentic. Like don't just clam up and answer what you think people want to hear when you do interviews, be authentic. Um, And apparently it's working for him. Like he's getting more sponsors than many of the top 10 athletes um yes. he's become a legend um with his with his remarks and his background story um you know the pig farmer from iowa um short and and he wins, he wins workouts. The, yeah so from this um uh let me let me go to so jake berman actually posted on instagram Colton's setup for bar facing burpees, which had like a two and a half change plate on each side of the bar. I did um, see that. And so that went back and forth. And now um next I think it's next week. Next Wednesday. Uh, yeah. Wednesday, yeah. Barbell spin is going to air hundred burpees for hundred burpees for time. Bar facing. In, bar yes. Between Colton Mertens and Jake Perman. We need more of this. We need as much of this as people will put out. Um, it's only going to help the athletes get more exposure. Um, and it entertains us all. You know, Wads on me had a great idea with Fit Wars. We just got to keep it going. Um, and we've seen with Taylor versus the world. And now this, like people get excited over this. Reps on reps or whatever it's called or something that's uh, coming reps, up. Reps ahead. Reps ahead. That's another type of one-on-one matchup stuff. You got to go, Scott, to uh, Max's Instagram. Um, I don't know if it's still I'm there. Happy. I have to see. I think it was there earlier. I like when people lean into stuff. He leaned into it. It's great. Oh, he switched it. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Okay, but if you go to his story, go to his story. He had put it on his story. Why isn't is A L right? Max A L E L. Max space or Max. Okay, all all all, all together for his Instagram. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I got it. It would be on his story. He because he switched his he reswitched his bio. Okay. I don't know if you can zoom in. Yeah. Yep. Coach fitness number one menace, brewing people in the think tank tub like Jake Berman, who have the fastest burpees in the game. That's great. All of this is brilliant. Brilliant to grow the sport. The trash talking, the back and forth. Now we're going to have it out on the floor. Um, I think that's going to be great. Predictions? I think Colton's going to win. Oh, Colton. 
I think it's going to be close, though. I, I Jake is extremely fast, but he's no Colton. Colton's there's there's only there's good. only one. There's he's there's no one beating him in in that stuff. Like he's literally the best. He's the best, and he's the guy that's willing to die for the reps. Like, it's funny because my mom's in the background sitting down. The odd time she'll be like, "Yeah, he's the best," and like chimes in a little bit on some of the responses. <laughs> my mom's into this chat right now. <laughs> awesome. So super stoked about that. Um, and uh, yeah, so super ha happy about that. Next up on the agenda, uh, did everybody get a chance to see the Danielle Brandon documentary? Sure did. Thoughts? It was good. Yeah. I loved it. I, I don't know much about her background. Um, so I got to, I was very impressed just like athletically, like what she did growing up and how sports was her coping mechanism for the crazy stuff that was going on at home and just to see how she turned out. Like it just, it gives you a different perspective on um, other people's lives. And like, it's just, yeah, just, you got to see a side of her that like, cause I, I know her like when I compete against her, but I don't know her. Right. So um, I like, I really enjoyed it. It's really, really good. I, while watching it, like I was, I was very curious to hear her background, um, like how she grew up and stuff. But when Savan called Taylor and Taylor commented that there was one thing that soured it for him, I immediately like we're on the couch and I was like, guarantee he says Cooper Marsh. Taylor was like Cooper Marsh when he said the flipping the birds. I had the exact same reaction watching it, and that like when I finished, I was just like. The whole, like, not the whole thing, but, like, it feels a bit scripted. And the big thing is, like, she's genuine. And even Dave says that, like, you just need to be genuine. But, like, I have this other, like, niggling question. Like, is it a little bit scripted? Like, I mean, it to me, it's like Cooper, like, told her to do that. So she did it. And he knew exactly what that was going to do in that situation. Like he's a great agent for a reason and he has taken her very far. Um, so I don't know, maybe that's just my, like the way my brain works, but that was my immediately thought. And when Savan called Taylor and Taylor said, said that, I was like, that was exactly how I felt watching it. So, okay. So I thought the background story was a 10 out of 10. Everything about how she grew up, the stuff she had to deal with, all of the, like the FBI, the jails, the 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 drugs, the yeah, the the like stealing that stuff from her mom and disposing of it as as a child, like the relationship with her brother and what happened when she had to get out of the house, like that broke my heart. Yeah, all of that, ten out of ten. Yeah, totally high school teacher the, yeah. that helped her out. That got her, made sure she saw that she had an opportunity to go to college, f fully paid, like, and made sure that happened. Like, the the family that bought her a computer, the like, all of that stuff was so freaking cool. Mm -hmm. When we get to the CrossFit stuff, I knew most of like her journey. Again. Since I started this podcast, we've been trying to follow people before they were famous. So mm -hmm. I knew her before Mayhem when they said in the movie, like nobody knew who she was till after the Mayhem classic. We've been following her for a little bit before then. So I knew all of that stuff. The part where it goes off the rails for me a little bit is the underdog story. And I don't know if it's how close I am with Justin that it just irked me. And the person who irked me was Cooper. It wasn't Danielle. It was him sitting off to the side saying, they just needed to have an adult conversation. And I'm just thinking, like, I'm sure that was tried. This wasn't a one-time deal that made this happen. 
And and they did kind of talk about that, but Cooper kind of just made it all this moot point, and they were just being immature. So, like, and yeah, I like Cooper. I mean, like, I've gotten along with Cooper a lot, but this did nothing for me and my viewpoint of Cooper. Yeah, because he just basically says, I don't think she should have been let go. And, like, that he, that quote, Cutler was wrong. Um Lex, but it made Lex me it too. made me like sensitive towards Kotler though. Like when you can see how much Kotler like um, ha has. I mean, he has so much passion for his athletes. Like the way he supports his athletes is is crazy, right? You, like everyone from the outside just sees it. So, like I I felt for him because it kind of it kind of made it look like he threw her under the bus right before the games. Which I mean, technically yes, right? Like but. Like she had like kicked her out, but there's other, I feel like there's a lot left out and we're seeing the one side a little bit more, or, I mean, I don't know. So that was the other thing, like the Mac ended and she says, and I went back and just was sitting by the pool and I get fired. It was a month later that she got fired. And there were other things that happened in that month for that to, to happen. To gl glance over, gloss over it like that was just, and there's Justin like giving out his heart and soul and saying how much it hurt him and how much affection she, he has for her to this day. Like that was, that was tough for me because that's my friend. And I know, I know how he felt about her and he talked about it all the time that he wanted her to win the games and mm -hmm. thought she had, Every, every bit of talent to do so. He was nonstop talking about her. Like at no. the Mac, like his passion in the stands, everything, you're like, wow. Like not only is Danielle such a talented athlete and fit athlete, but she now has the support and the coach. And like you knew she had a rough background. That it was almost like a father figure from the outside, right? Like. It was like now she can actually go and win the games because she has someone that's believing in her when maybe she doesn't always believe in herself, right? And that's that's a kind she of like relationship that you saw from the outside. She said so. that in the doc herself that he was like a father yeah. figure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that like I wasn't upset at the way what Danielle had said. No. Th th there are hurt feelings there that I am hoping someday the two of them can come together and and build a bridge back. But man, the way Cooper dealt with it, I. I, it just upset me. Yeah, I agree. Well, and Elise says it sounds like it sounded like it was either he let one athlete go or lose multiple. Is Cooper not an agent for any one of those other like 10 athletes that were at underdogs at that time? Because he had to have had responses only, from those coaches and athletes who were who had told Kotler he was they were going to pull out. If, and she was kind of already on the outs of that, like leaving that camp well moving moving well, so not being well, there if you remember the next season she had hurt her back yes in the open. could and not i think she'd already moved to and she was getting like, married yeah so yeah so so, so he didn't have it here so he didn't have any direct contact with i mean who all was there annika kyra um alex Paul, Delugos. Alex, yeah, Delugos. Um, there was, I mean, there was a I lot. Probably Mickey like had ten. Started. Yeah, and I'm sure it was the girls more than anything. But you like, at some point, Cooper's got to take a business look at that from Kotler's side and be like, I mean, yeah, like he can't lose the other. Even like she might be great. And she might be great for the sport and your brand, but like if if it's going to stop anyone else from coming there, how great in the end is it going to be? And you would think I, as a like I under like and I understand he like really wants to have her back. Like I'm glad she has someone in her life still that's like continues to support her the way he seems to be. But if if she watches that back and can't see the love from from Justin still, that's sad. I, well, think she, you, I think if she. You watch, would. If you watch the Lauren interview with Danielle, 
I would say it's reciprocated from her. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, you, you, the you could see the emotional. The whole time she was at Brute, she was telling them, "You're not. You don't care about me like Cutler did. You don't." So, and she said that flat out in that other interview. Hmm. That she missed the way she was coached by Cutler. And how he believed in her, and like, but, but like, you know, nobody believed in me like he did. Like he, she kept saying that, and so like, you can tell on both ends, they still love each other, in a way that none of us will ever know, like coach athlete, but, and I'm hoping at some point in time they can come to a reconciliation. That's what that documentary gave me hope for in that underdogs aspect. Oh, well, she's clear. I mean, she's, she's clearly hurting and like has always felt like she's cast aside and not wanted. And like that, I'm that did nothing for her. I'm sure like that just, piled on top of everything else that bad that's happened throughout her life. And I felt for her in that instance, but at some point you also need to look at your actions, mannerisms and how you treat other people and like do some critical thinking there too. Like. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. It, it was so overall I give the, I give the entire documentary probably an eight with the background stuff, a 10, CrossFit stuff like a seven, six and a half, six, um, and then together like an eight. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I liked it. I just thought like the timing of it was interesting. It's like middle of the season. Like I don't like uh, wasn't sure on the timing well, of it. And then they didn't go much into like the after like brew like a little bit with Dallin, but kind of like where she is now by name. I agreed. No mention of of Matt. No yeah, mention. There was no, there was no mention of that. Not once. It was Dallin. Yeah, I thought that was strange. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, maybe that's the sequel. But I, for timing wise, and I and I was watching Spin last night. It makes perfect sense to me. There is this is the boring time of the season with no good content. If you can put out good content now people will flock to it. And last, like when I checked, when I woke up this morning, it had like 38,000 views already. And I'm sure it's piled them on today. Yeah. And I guess now people will be like rooting for her even more. So, I mean, she's yes. probably one of the most popular athletes anyways, but I'm sure they're behind her even more and have. And I hope a better understanding. I hope the reason behind it is what she said hoping that other people that were in my situation will see this and draw inspiration from it. But when, um, you, when you learn what she went through and kept her grades up and got a full ride scholarship, like that blows me away. Huh. So... Yeah, and I agree with Elise. It was probably filmed a while ago. <laughs> yeah, but they the Danielle part. They were together at the games, and they have a ton of games coverage. They were get together at semis. What do you mean, brute? Her I'm talking about timing. I'm talking timing wise. Oh, yeah, like it. It just it probably was filmed last season. They edited it through the fall. Editing takes a long time. Trust me. Oh, well, I'm just, she said this seemed to end around the time she would have gotten with Matt. And I don't necessarily agree with that. Like, I think there would have been plenty of, she just, I would say she clearly doesn't want any part of her love life in. Which I mean, makes sense. Cause it's like, if you're going to do a documentary, I don't think that I would want like, especially if you're not with that person anymore, like you don't want to be remembering, like that's a, I want it to be a documentary that you can like look at for the rest of your life and go back to it. I don't know. And she doesn't want that part. And if it's no longer relevant, I guess. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on. We're, we're at the hour mark. We need to land this plane. So I wanted to talk quickly about my coach owner of my gym going to Houston Kicking ass and taking names. Christy O'Connell. 
goes to Houston, does a high rocks. We all said it on this show before she went. She was going to crush it. Not only did she crush it, she had one of like the the sixty second fastest time ever at a high rocks event. Third, I think, and her first ever one. And like she said that like she didn't even know she didn't even know like the order of the stuff. She didn't even know like where to go for transitions. Like if she actually like like this was like her test her first full test run of what the hell this thing is about. Like you're you're shaving a lot of seconds if you actually know where you're going and how the routes are, you know. Like she can only go up, I think, from here. She finished in, a, in an hour and four minutes and some change. The fastest in the world, I think, is 58 minutes. Yeah, that girl's a beast. So you're only talking like, and that's of all time. Not this year. That is of all time. And she was a former CrossFitter too. Michelle, Michelle Weeks, right? Lauren Weeks. Lauren Weeks. Um, and, and that was her first one. You know she's shaving time off of it. Yeah. She didn't even know how to you work the automated wall ball counter. I know. She's throwing Did you hear high. that? Like, yeah, she's she over. All above the, the counter thing. So she was getting no rep for a while. Um, I didn't know that was there. So I'm glad she pointed that out because I would do the exact same thing. So, yeah. So she didn't know any of that stuff going in. You got to think she takes a couple minutes off just knowing what she's doing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I'm anxious. Not, not surprising though at all. She's one of the best runners, mm-hmm. if not you know, top runner that we've had in CrossFit. Um, consistently, basically a top ten athlete at the games. Like she's always been one of my favorites to follow. I just I think that she's super talented. What I thought was cool in the in her little mini documentary of it is uh, these high rocks athletes are coming over wanting their picture with him that her saying that you're an inspiration because you're a shorter athlete. And I look up to you because I, I can relate to you. I don't know how many people have told me on the road, tell Christy, she's an inspiration. I'm a shorter athlete. And she's my favorite because of that. Like a hundred people have told me that. Yeah. So super cool. Um, uh affiliate town hall today announced some stuff about the quarterfinals sure did, did you guys see that no court no floor plans will be released until the workouts are released yep and there will be four workouts uh spin did point out in his article that does not say only four scored events it only says four workouts correct so thoughts on that and what I didn't know, and maybe this was public knowledge before, but I saw that there was just the two submission windows, Saturday and Monday. Um, I fully expected it to be the like Friday, Saturday, or Saturday, Sunday, Monday, like it was, has been in the past, um, like a two, two, one thing. But with only the four workouts, I guess it sort of makes sense. I'm, I'm shocked there's only four workouts, to be honest. Even even if it's even if there's two two parters, I'm still shocked. With that long of a window, it almost just gives too much time. Agreed. That's what I've liked about the five workout six scores type thing, like in four days. Like, good luck if you redo one of those because you're gonna be hurting. And, and like you got to be smart you about. I want it to. Like, yeah, I don't want that. I want yeah. it to be. I want it to be like an in-person comp as much as possible. Here's your. Here's your 24 hours. Here's the code. Do the workouts and get and submit it. And then I'll give you the code for the next one because you can't do it before till I give you the code. Like I want it to be. I want you and I to do workout one and two on day one together. Not you get in workout three and because that was your weakest, and then maybe you beat me at two because you were able to strategize something because you're in Europe and you have 12 extra hours or something before you go to bed. Like, I don't want any of that. I want, here's workout one, do it. Here's workout two, do it. Here's workout three, do it. Just like a comp would be, everyone does them the same order. One time. The, the but, only like, thing, the only thing with that is because they're extending it at 25%. Like you have to allow people that have jobs during the week or, or weekend, whatever to, 
plan accordingly. Like if, if it's one workout, they do a class. Yeah. Right. Like I'm tired of that because this is really like the, this is qualifying for the semis is going to be really freaking hard. Very yes. hard. And at this point, the elite athletes have to have a fair competition that is evenly spread out over different modalities, different aspects. There's going to there's be a max lift that's going to count for 20%. There's going to be a part two that's going to be a max lift with 25% of the people that are like not fatigued going into the max lift, and then they're going to pull up big numbers. And if it's a bad lift for you, Good luck making that 40 top 40. Exactly. Like, <sighs> like there better be minimum work week requirement. There better be, it better be like six rounds for time in this time. If you finish the work, you get this work. Like you can't, I don't feel like it can be like the quarter, the, our semifinals workout last year that was he started with hands wall facing handstand pushups. And there were people who did zero who got to get a lift in and beat me out on the leaderboard and pushed me down. Like that kind of stuff. When you have 25, you have people who we have no idea if they got one bar muscle, probably barely no skills. They're just going to come in and finally John Young finally gets his barbell and lift and lifts something so heavy without necessarily having the fitness to, which is the bottom of the pyramid. Let's make sure you have that first. Like, are we going to even going to get another workout, like workout three, like to make sure people have the fitness I mean, you clear, well, clearly need that workout, a very similar workout again to make sure like someone like Brooke or Tia don't get through if they aren't healthy enough to get through. Like we can't, you can't be like, well, we already tested that. People got through on that. That I'll baby take, shouldn't get through. I'll take Jamie doesn't want Brooke or Tia to make it into semis. I, I listen, yeah. I hope they're, I hope they're recovered by then. I just don't want anyone to be able to limp in like, because I'm, it I'm got just, tested. I'm just, I'm just giving you shit because another hot take from coach Krispy Kreme HQ has never had to program a more important set of tests ever more important than any open semis or games prior. The That's window so for elite athletes is so freaking small. And the workouts are the same from 16 to 54. Correct. Correct. Which is crazy. And then Dave has said that it's going to be like, everyone can start them, right? Like you can start them. Right. So it, obviously like, like a max lift, if it's a max lift, like everyone can start that. And then you're just going to your own capacity versus a lot like, I don't know. And then do they have like rope climbs and GHGs and stuff? Cause like 25%, like there's a lot of gyms don't have 15 foot ceilings, like big warehouses. Yeah, they, they do outside of big cities. But if you're in a big city, if you're in New York, if you're in Chicago and stuff, and you're just like smaller affiliate with like downtown, like you don't have 15 foot ceilings um, in certain parts of the country. GHDs, like how many do gyms have? Like if you're Mayhem, you have like 50 of them. But most gyms have what? Like one to four or five. And you got like a bunch of people needing to do the workouts. Like, do they include that? Or maybe now they don't include that. Um uh, ACR heard a rumor that Jamie doesn't like Tia or Brooke. That is what? After a deep dive has discovered because they're not Canadian. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've got no rebuttal. It may be true. Coach Krispy Kreme <laughs> back in the comments. I think, uh, I think of this quarters in the neck, in the context of the precedence it will set and the impact it'll have on the majority of the competitive CrossFit community. Yeah, it, it's going to be really telling on like if if there is a lift, it is going to push this the entire space into heavier, stronger, and they like really need to decide is does the base of the period pyramid mean mean a little bit more, or does are they just going to push strength? Jamie, you've been awarded a point from Chris. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Carolyn's done with the points. I was going to say something and I forgot my. <laughs> oh. No, I think, I think Kristen or Chris, Tristan 
has um has made an excellent point and it's he said it way better than i could ever say it this this round of the this year's season is so freaking critical like and i don't think people understand that i don't think i, I don't i don't think it, I, I i don't know if they if they care about the 40th athlete i totally agree like look at the cuts at the games i mean i was at dinner with dave and i told him that i didn't like the cuts like last year when i was on the demo team and like they don't like the top people are still gonna rise to the top and at the end of the day like if you're making it 40th like in their mind like you're probably not making it to the games anyways like and those athletes are very dependent on workouts which is like everyone minus you know five people per region maybe that can go on any workout but i don't know I think Taylor made a great point today on Shut Up and Scribble. CrossFit yeah. only cares about the top five. Yes. If the top five get the whole way through, if Brent, Pat, Roman, Ricky, and Jeff all make it through, they're happy. And they could care less about the however the rest fall. Yeah. They care that, that Tia, Laura, Emma, probably Ariel now they and Alex make it in and the rest, they could care less. Yep. Like, I hope not. I hope that they're like, I, I feel like they're, I mean, they, they know that this, they know, right. That this is important. <laughs> they know, right. That they need to program like pretty good workouts now for top 40. Like, I hope that they're taking it like, seriously and really thinking about the combination of movements and how many workouts and scored events like the more the better the more the more precise it's going to be for the field like four events i if there's only four events that's that sucks there won't be there's no way just to let the, the, the strong guy talk i laugh every time the complaints about the lifts come in you always have to lift with a high heart rate. It really drops your numbers. But that elevated heart rate means it's all met metabolic condition. And he ran out of space, so he finished it. Uh, but we have not tested strength at all. Just take it out of the pyramid if we aren't testing it. But we don't need to be the strongest. We need to be strong enough. And you could test strength under, like, muscular fatigue say like basically last year at the end of the open, it was that hand, the wall, wall facing, or sorry, uh, wall walks, a snatch, double unders, maybe we're in there. Was there double? Yeah. Unders? In the, and it was like the open. handstand push up. Yeah. And a little bit yeah. heavier. Like that one, you're testing strength under like yeah. muscular fatigue of the shoulder. And then you could also do kind of like a shuttle run and also strength under a high heart rate, but you don't need to be top end strength like you yes. just you just need to be strong like like you you can't make it through if you're weak but you still have to test strength but we're saying to have one scored event be a not a um uh just a lift like yeah just a one movement just a lift. i say monostructural but the, the, that's not what i meant um i meant uh yeah single, so, modality. single modality Sing wow yeah the one year they had the burpee that you had to complete to earn your right to lift. Yes, exactly. One I had to redo that to be able to get my lift in. No, the double dumbbell um, squat and the burpee, bar facing burpee, double dumbbell squat. You 18, had to finish 18.2A or whatever it was. Yep. You had to finish the 10 rounds. If you didn't finish the 10 rounds, you didn't get to do B. Yes. I'm good with that. What yes. LDY is saying here, though, I laugh every time the complaints come in about the lifts. You always have to lift with a heart rate. That's bull crap. There's tons of work. We've had tons of workouts that have not said that you have to have a high heart rate. We've had four rep front squat, completely its own workout, single modality, not under a high heart rate. We've had, you could just, you could have literally just done, walked some shuttles and done 10 burpee pull-ups and sat there for the rest 10 minutes and been completely fresh and hit a crazy thruster. So no, you can't tell me that you always have to lift with a high heart rate. Like, 
if they're going to test just lifting, I like, I just don't agree with it. Not at this stage. Like I'm totally fine with earning the lift. But the, this it goes, in. not only just lifting, you can't just have a gymnastics, just have a, like, we're not just not, like, just a single modality specialized workout as one of the four or five scored events can really skew. Like, I want to see just couplets and triplets and, yeah, like, one's testing just pure capacity. One's got maybe, uh, you know, gateways that you just kind of progress through stuff. Um, you can have a great test still like that. Oh, yeah. Like, I love the workout, at eight. I don't know, 18.3 or whatever, the ascending squat cleans with the toe to bar and the double under. 19.2. Like, you you had to be fit enough to get to the final barbell. Uh-huh. Like, those are great workouts. And some people can't get there because they can't keep doing the double unders or the toe to bar. And some people just can't get past the fourth barbell weight. And great. The top 40 are going to rise. Like, those are perfect workouts. Or you get there and you have no grip strength left, so the bar just flies out of your hand. Okay. <laughs> That's me. That's this guy. Yes, Ken, preach. You want to lift heavy, switch over to Olympic or powerlifting. Go to a go to a lifting sport if that's what you want to do. I think placed in the right spot, heavy lifts are a good thing. But I am not I am not a, a big fan of just a one unless you're at the games with 12 events or 15 events. Like a one rep max on its own is just not something I want to see at this stage of the of the competition. And like addressing uh Tristan's point here, like if you bring that one up, like, would you want, would you be okay with the lift of the other events? No, because I don't want single modalities, uh, all of them to be like single modalities, specialist type workouts here. We need MGW, like couplets, triplets, um, and really testing a broad, like broad things. Like, I don't, I don't think I want like that's like, I don't think that would be a good test. It's very skewed towards specialists. Great. And, uh, Mr. Young, I, back with you. Just want, if you want just engine, do high rocks. I have, I am considering it completely. I will see how this year's quarters and semis are programmed. And if they keep pushing just heavy weights, I will switch over to high rocks 100%. And Tristan was just making a point. He was not, that's not what he believed in. So, all right. So, quarterfinals. Actually, before we get on the air again next week, the team quarterfinals workouts will be released. They come out next Wednesday to start. Yes, correct. Uh, regretfully, Jamie's team did not make it on to quarterfinals. So we don't have an inside look at that. Um, but we'll be watching. Um, who are you most excited to see how they do in quarterfinals? I don't know. Maybe Noah's team. I don't know. If, I, I don't know enough about the, how, like all the teams, like I know there's like Kara's team. That's really good. Noah's Chandler's team. Um, I guess I just, I need to see the field. Cause right now I feel like a lot of scores are getting counted on teams that probably aren't doing right. So like, that which which is what sucks, right? Because I, I don't know where you guys finished finished, Jamie, yeah. but are I'm sure you guys are getting affected by rosters that are pulling a bunch of different scores. And like this is when we're gonna see who are the actual members of a team. Um and Jamie's team was yeah. really close. Which sucks. Yeah. I'm sure you guys are in if you take out half of the teams in front of you that aren't even using all their people. If they could have got one more male finisher on the third event, they'd be in. I think if we could have gotten five more reps, we'd be in. If they could, if he could have gotten like five more muscle ups at the end. Oh, well is what it is. Uh, Kenneth, no mayhem still has a team. Uh, Angelo, yeah. uh, three like members two. are coming back from last year. They, um, they substituted, uh, What's her Molly face? Molly McGrady. Yeah, not her, but they substituted the one that was Kyra. There. Kyra, Kyra with Molly McGrady um, from mm -hmm. Michigan. Yep. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, the, the other three are staying intact. So the team I'm most look for, looking forward to has nothing to do with the top of the leaderboard. I just want to see them move on. And that is the underdogs team with my one of my favorite people in the world, Mitch McLoon, uh, who is Mr. Carrie Pierce. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is putting together a team with Carson Wolf and um gosh, I knew them all and now they just went out my head. I don't know who's on that team. Uh, we interviewed all of them last year for the semifinal yeah. piece. Um, and they put that team together. I love Mitch. Mitch is just one of my favorite people ever. And I want to see how well they do. Um, and those, the girls are young up and comers that a year on team is probably going to be really good for them. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so super stoked for them and uh, can't wait to see what they're doing. Plus it's going to be interesting to see kind of what these European teams, because there's one that got put together, right? With um, Christoph Horvath, um, Jamie, I think it's Jamie right. Simmons, Elliot. Simmons, oh yes, and, and the uh, strong. Oh my God, what's her name? Um, Mia. Has, Mia. Has, 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 yes. oh, she's so strong. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting. She's good at gymnastics too. too. She's good. Now, when we see quarterfinals, okay. we'll only see them against their own. Will the leaderboard just be their own region? Correct. Okay. We may need to get Holly on, like com- making a combined one just for chits and giggles to kind of see how everybody's doing. Yeah. I would think she'd be able to do that fairly easily. So uh, anything else about the team? Any workouts? I I cannot predict workouts. I know for teams at this point, there is no worm. So it's how do you figure out like teamwork at this stage, probably some synchro stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably there's going to be a relay style. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. I talked about this at the end of the verses. Haley and I talk, were talking about it, about missing out and what we might do this week. And we said maybe when the workouts come out, especially if there is a female female pairing, maybe we'll still do it. Um, and I'm just very curious to see them because usually there's like one workout that is very similar to the individuals. Like they did the pairing of the clean, heavy clean and jerks. And I don't know if their, bur- their burpee box jump over was in it, but like they have a one work that like mimics the individuals. So I'm just curious to see the team workouts and see if we can glean anything from them. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, we'll have lots to talk about next week because those workouts will be out. Yeah. We'll probably see some YouTube stuff. Yeah. And I want to finish up with next week. We're starting a new, or this week, we're starting a new show Easter night. Uh, and it is, if you have not seen it out on YouTube yet, uh, the zombie Clydesdale weekend retest. And this is going to be a look back at the week that was in our a little bit of news, a little bit of humor, a little bit of stuff like that. Um, it's going to be fun. Uh, is it always going to be Sunday nights? What time? Uh, I think it's going to be Sunday nights at eight is what we're shooting for. Uh, we were doing that with Jamie and the uh, open workouts and going over them. So we're just going to keep that time slot because it's there's nothing else going on on Sunday nights and it's kind of lets you look back at the week that was before you head into the week that it is going to be. Awesome. Um, and we've got some content already brewing uh, to, to hand out and I can't wait to, to share it. First week will probably be a train wreck as we're trying to figure out timing and all that kind of stuff. But Hey, that might be fun too. But, uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be an interesting take on some things. If you follow Wad Zombie on Instagram, you know his sense of humor. So we like to call it um, a combination of Weekend Update from Saturday Night Live and uh, like The Daily Show or John Oliver. Um, and then Kenneth, I think last, last time I talked to him, said Tosh 2.0 or Tosh.0. Yeah. Something like that. 
So it's going to be similar to that, uh, but done around the CrossFit, pop culture, and uh, probably a little bit of news uh, that we see seem to think is funny. So with that, anything to add, guys, before we get off the air? Nope. I ripped enough. All right. Well, we will catch everybody next week on Thursday Night CrossFit Talk for the team quarterfinals. Bye, guys. See you guys.